football, it is my boy Eric Phoenix, man. Eric Phoenix makes the move. So, Eric Phoenix, I think he made a pretty strategic move. I, I, I will not say that was the wrong move for this kid. I honestly feel like from an exposure standpoint and being seen on the national stage, this is it. Aside from aside from South Carolina State and getting that ABC game against Jackson State, this was probably it. Going to Murray State was probably a pretty good decision for Eric Phoenix and what he wanted to do with his career. I think as one of the top Division II quarterbacks, getting a chance at the Division I level has probably always been a dream for him. And having a chance at Murray State with the Racers and really a clear shot to become QB1, I think he saw this as a spot that he should really take. Couldn't pass up. When you look at Murray State, they moved to the Missouri Valley Conference this year, which is one of the toughest conferences in, in FCS football. It features North Dakota State, North Dakota, South Dakota, South Dakota State, all those guys, right? Missouri State, the whole gauntlet. Well, this year, Eric Phoenix will play South Dakota. He will play North Dakota State. He will play Missouri State. And he will play North Dakota. All top-tier FCS programs. Along with that, his non-conference schedule, he'll get a chance to face off against the University of Louisville and Middle Tennessee. I think Eric Phoenix honestly wants to test himself against some of the top talent in the nation. And he's going to get a chance to this year. He'll get a chance to the full gauntlet of the Missouri Valley Conference and also in non-conference get a chance to see how he matches up against some ACC play. So, for Eric Phoenix, happy you found your spot. I'm hopeful that you excel and succeed at your new home. So let's get into the rest of these players up here. So another player that is very interesting is Cam Ransom, right? I was talking to the homegirl Ty early on Twitter about it, and Cam Ransom will shake up this Bethune-Cookman uh, quarterback room. I was given the job to Tyreek Bethune about a week ago, and I do think that he can still win out the job. But Cam Ransom has some serious upside that you got to think about, right? So before I get into Cam Ransom, I will say this. Moving around from Georgia Southern and going to McNeese last year, then popping out again and going to Bethune-Cookman is somewhat a red flag. So I'm, I'm looking at you a little different. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Just at the fact that the, a fast movement, that's three schools in two years, right? School year isn't over. <laughs> or is it it just finished so i mean that's three schools in three years and yeah now it's something to think about something about for sure but when you watch the play on the field though cam ransom can go you put a ball in his hands lefty he's a gunslinger he can go i, I would trust my college football team in his hands honestly but it's something to think about the fact that he did not win out the job at mcneese last year i thought he had a decent chance he did not win out that job so we're gonna check out some highlights from cam ransom though Check out his reaction. Cam, I mean, he got some cool stuff. This dude, Cam Ransom, can really go, man. He throws the ball at a high rate. And I think he's a, a guy that's a, really a playmaker. You know, some quarterbacks you got that are, are playmakers. Some quarterbacks you got are game managers. This guy is a guy that's going to sling the rock. He's going to take chances downfield for his team to win. And he's going to take it with confidence. He doesn't throw it at the last second. He throws it usually earlier in routes. This guy, Cam Ransom, to me, is somebody that's very decisive at quarterback. He takes his choices. I mean, take, takes his choices. He takes his shots. He takes them. He sees it and he takes it. I want that quarterback. You know, on the ground, he's decent. I, I don't really want him running. I'm not sure if he's really that guy. But through the air, if we can get him to roll out, move around the pocket, and get him moving, I think he's very dangerous. You could definitely use him at Bethune Cookman. So Bethune Cookman's uh, new quarterback battle is like this you got cam ransom the new quarterback you're gonna have this quarterback that's at bethune cookman now dom ponder right three-star quarterback and you got tylik bethu i like tylik bethu of these three quarterbacks but i do think this will be an actual quarterback battle i think all three of these quarterbacks are pretty competent i do think dom ponder is going to take a year or so for development i'm sorry you don't see too many true freshmen hop into division one college football on any level, FCS or FBS, make a true impact in year one. So, as well as Don Ponder may have played in the spring game, I'm not completely confident going with him for the swag this year with the gauntlet that Bethune-Cookman is going to have to face. 
Now, this Bethune-Cookman uh, quarterback room has gotten much better. Shout out to Coach Raymond Woody and what he's doing with Bethune-Cookman's quarterback room at the moment. I think he's now developing competition. Before, there was more of the, okay, who's going to take the job? Or who can just be the starter? But now you're creating a competition, and that creates better players. And I mean, quite honestly, you're going to get a bigger output from all of these players now. I'm sure when Don Ponder was in the quarterback room by himself with whoever else, he really felt like this was his job to lose. I think after you enter your master student, Talik Bethu, you enter Cam Ransom, a Division One bounce back, you got to think that there's a lot of competition in that room now. So another move was from Prairie View A&M. Pick up a cornerback, Armand Robinson from Arkansas State. He makes a move over to Prairie View A&M. Pretty interesting move. You got to you gotta always know that Bubba McDowell is always working when it comes to, de- to defense. Uh, linebackers, corners, safeties. He tends to bring in the, the, the 24-7 guys when it comes to defense. Now, another guy that just got moved into the SWAC is Demontres Brown, wide receiver out of Alabama State, right? This guy just transferred in from Troy. Checked out his tape, and I actually like him a lot. I think he can be a difference maker for Alabama State. Now, the difference maker they need is going to be under center. But Demontrez Brown and what he does on the outside is a little scary. I think he could play the potential X role for this Alabama State team if you can shift Levante into the slot. I think Levante actually will be a cool slot, much like his brother. But I think that you have to move him into the slot because you, you look at Demontrez Brown and go, that's our X receiver. But he's our guy, right? Big size guy. He's pretty explosive for his size, and he's really a deep threat. He's a guy that stretches the field. He does not create a lot of space. He's not going to burn you. But with his really elite hands, he finds a way to come down with the ball all of the time. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Duke Miller we talked about a couple weeks ago, where he transferred into Jackson State, but he doesn't have elite breakaway speed. But downfield as a threat, when the ball is in the air, got to watch out right that that type of guy is a red zone threat that type of guy is a guy that moves the chains you need that so i do think that demontrez brown could help out this alabama state quarterback room and be another reliable target aside from Kishan johnson and levante chanel now lastly there's another play on this list that just moved over to a loaded loaded room right and that is gary corals Former running back from Alabama A&M, he makes the move to Southern. He was previously committed to UNLV for a couple of weeks. Then he decommitted, and about four days after that, he committed to Southern University. Now, Gary Kors is a great player. I think he's a, a very explosive running back that works well with the committee. I don't, I'm not sure if he's an every-down guy. But in a committee, Gary Kors definitely seems like he could be your guy. So... In a normal situation where Gary Corals joins a committee, I would probably like it for him. But in this committee at Southern, where the running backs already go four deep, I'm not that excited about this committee for Gary Corals. I got to be real. I think that he can succeed in this offense, but will he get a chance to touch the rock enough to succeed in this offense? We saw at Alabama State how he did earth, wind, and fire. Well, I mean, it's damn near like the gap band at Southern. If you're talking about all these running backs, it's going to be it's going to be a hard trying to feed all of these guys. And unless some of these guys turn into receiving backs where Gary, Gary Corals can catch the ball, if more of these guys can turn into receiving backs, you may get a chance for more touches. But you, you got to believe that from last year, what we saw out of Southern, where there was a lot of spread sets. There won't be too many opportunities to have multiple running backs in the backfield at one time, let alone feed a running back traditionally throughout the series of one game. I, I kind of can't see it, honestly, from his Eric Dooley offense. He's, he's a little pass happy. I think Bashan McCray kind of tucked the ball and ran with it sometimes last year. But I think a lot of what Eric Dooley's offense is is made through the air and through the vertical dominance. So our transfer portal is shaking up. There are plenty of moves out there. These are some of the moves that I highlighted this past week that really made the most sense to me. And I think some of the moves that are honestly some of the biggest impacts on different HBCU programs. 
So, uh, oh, man, one more time for Eric Phoenix, man. Eric Phoenix finally makes some moves. He moves out of the SIAC. I'm acting like I'm not hurt, y'all. I'm acting. 